Morning everybody, I'm Dario Sante, I'm partner of the uh, Internet of Energy Education and Qualification uh, project funded by the European Commission. Today we are here for one of the webinar registered in the framework uh, of the project. Uh, I'm glad to introduce uh, Dr. Vincenzo Croce and Dr. Giuseppe Aveduto from uh, Engineering uh, Engineering Informatica, that is a huge Italian uh, IT company. They will take a webinar entitled Blockchain Enabled uh, Decentralized Network Optimization and Demand Response Verification. Um, I'm really glad to introduce this webinar because uh, the results that we are going to hear are also part of uh, another AU funded project, in this case an Horizon 2020 project called a Dream. So there is also uh, a nice connection among these two EU funded pro projects. So uh, thanks a lot Dr. Croce for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Good morning everybody. Uh, I'm Vincenzo Croce again from uh, R&D Laboratory of Engineering Engineering Informatica and me and uh, Giuseppe Raveduto are going to introduce you the uh, an overall uh, nutshell of uh, eDream project that is uh, an uh, European H2020 project co-founded by European Commission that is, is a still a running project started in 2018. Today we are going in through the, the, the summary of this presentation, we are going to introduce the, the project, then we are going to underline the different aspects that uh, uh, in the investigation of uh, blockchain uh, adoption for those kind of uh, technological themes, uh, themes uh, we, we, we perform during the project and uh, actually uh, going uh, more in deep on the specific mechanism uh, on secure storage, decentralized uh, smart contract for the grid control and also the, the validation of financial settlements. Uh, uh, as main description, we are going to use the, the blockchain under conceptual point of view for the what is in some way called notarization of uh, uh, of data from the meters and uh, this is the one part related to the data handling and on the other side we are using the smart contract for the definition of uh, flexible contracts uh, uh, used to manage the agreements among the different customers in the platform. Uh, Giuseppe in the second part of this pre presentation will go more in depth in those mechanisms that we are experimenting. Uh, next please Giuseppe. In the, the project is a project, as I said, that is co-founded by the, the European Commission. It is a research and innovation activity, a three years project that started in January 2018. It is an ongoing project. We had the first check at the end of the first reporting period, and now we are approaching the, the second, uh, the middle of second reporting period. So, in terms of uh, uh, operational aspect of the project, uh, we already had the delivery of uh, uh, main technologies that we will see are ranging from the, the usage of uh, drone, LiDAR and thermal image for the scouting of potential flexibility in the districts and then the, the handling of the district, uh, the handling of the flexibility and uh, the finishing with the ending of financial transactions that are related to the economical transaction. The overall cost of the project is uh, 3 million and 800 euros, euros. Engineering is the coordinator of this project and uh, the, it is a collaboration among different uh, partners in, in Europe, including Italy, uh, Greece, Romania, uh, Romania, Spain and UK. We have a website that is the one reported there. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> between E and U, there is not a space. <laughs> but if you link, if you click in the presentation, you should have the presentation uh, circulated at the end of this meeting. Th there is uh, the, the link on the, on the website where we are descri describing the project and the different pilots and the result that we achieved so far. Next, please. 
as a collaboration is including big companies like uh, Atos Engineering and, uh, and then also we have uh, uh, in, uh, a compulsory uh, participation of stakeholders that include the ASM Termi that is the multi-utility managing the, the uh, operating as DSO in the in the Terni district. Terni is a, is a city, it's not very big city, but a city. In, uh, in located in the center of uh, of Italy, let's say close by to to Rome, and then we have uh, uh, aggregators also Kiwi that is from UK that is one aggregator operating in the market with a very let's say advanced commercial offer, and then we have also Motion located in Italy managing for the the fleet management electrical vehicles fleet management, and also one ESCO, one Romanian ESCO, that is uh, SV Servlet. And in terms of academia, we have uh, uh, Tside University from UK, CERT Research Center from Greece, and uh, Cluj-Napoca uh, Technical University from uh, Romania. And this is the, the overall partnership that uh, with complementary roles is, uh, is uh, managing for, uh, for the project. Next one. We have arranged the pilots uh, around the three main uh, uh, pilot sites. Two are formally pilot sites, and the other one is is uh, is called the uh, uh, in lab pilot site. The, the two main live uh, pilot sites are Terni, as I said, that uh, is adopting a, a demand response program that is experimenting the different mechanisms that we we are putting in place in uh, in a dream then the other is in the uk it was uh, it was initially the the area of london the city uh, area of london then we we were forced for some reason essentially related to the the possibility to fly drones in this area because there is an airport that is close by and then is a city center so we, we had uh, some difficulties to fly drones so we we set up a new pilot site that is a greenwich pilot site is not very far from from london and we are using this pilot site with the experimentation including the the, the flying Flying the drones for the scouting of flexibility in the, in the district, and then the the third one is uh, in in Greece. It's a CERT uh, in Thessaloniki that is offering the laboratory, that is actually on, on the field the laboratory. I mean that is uh, is uh, a living laboratory composed including uh, many equipment infrastructure one energy efficient building that is equipped with many sensors so we are able to measure a lot of parameters and also using their PV air condition and every kind of equipment is very controlled and very monitored so we can have a, a very precise uh, uh, reading and understanding of which is the, the situation electrical situation thermal situation uh, air uh, a controlling situation and many other factors and in this one we are also experimenting both the the, the mechanism demand blockchain based demand response uh, uh, contracts and also we are flying the, the drone in in this area to to use the detection uh, on on the specific field just to give you an idea the drone is flying and is able to detect different thermal area. Is all it's it's composing a lidar information with thermal information with a visible information to detect equipment to identify if there is one PV installed to estimate the capability of the PV of or different kind of equipment like heat pump or. Uh, CHP or any kind of equip or, or any kind of different kind of equipment that can be uh, in the in the district. Uh, the the main, main idea is to explore new district, explore new area, and identify do this kind of early identification of of uh, uh, flexibility provider potential flexibility providers, and uh, then have a follow up with the engage, engagement of them in in the district. Next slide, please. In in the uh, okay in in the general concept of, of a dream, the distribution network is uh, is going to cover more and more a new role. 
the 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 behind the scene mechanism is that there, there is a cooperation that is possible inside the 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 network and this cooperation is mainly involving uh, the grid owner on one side and the, the third part uh, uh, private uh, presumer on this on the on the other side and this kind of collaboration is something that uh, is going to to mix together the decentralized collaboration among the different customers and then the the kind of uh, uh, centralized approach the grid owner would like to 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 put in place so it's it's creating a kind of of hybrid model the questions uh, and the investigation terms are the one in in terms of uh, how to do this which kind of demand response program to put in place which kind of technologies we need to 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 uh, to realize uh, to, in order to enable this kind of uh, ecosystem the, the point is that uh, uh, flexibility market is still uh, liquid in some cases is unfair and in some cases also un unclear so the point of definition of the scenario is which which kind of service we we can uh, we can have in, in this uh, in this kind of scenario uh, which kind of approach having uh, an incentive approach or market oriented approach and also which kind of flexibility we, we can uh, exploit in this approach. The dream uh, solution is, is a platform near real time that is, is intentional to use blockchain in the, in the two structure, in the two layers that I mentioned before, the data handling and the, the flexibility, co flexible contract Handling, handling via smart contract and the, the, the general idea is to create a business ecosystem where the grid owner can in, interact with the, the, the different presumers and uh, some of the use cases that we are exploring more are for example the creation of dynamic coalition of presumers that can offer uh, can, have, can offer flexibility and uh, uh, risk be fair on the respect of, on respect of them, them. So the idea is to create this de democratic process where they are allowed to interact with a condition that is, uh, is for them uh, affordable, is for them convenient and, and so on. On the other side, blockchain is, is intentional to, to, to be used as the part of uh, supporting the grid control in terms of supporting the uh, monitoring and checking of the agreement that uh, are established between the grid owner and the different prosumer at the market time. The general idea is that there are two main time phases. One is the marketing or the agreement phase where there is an agreement, there is detection of issues and problem and then identification of potential plan and then agreement between the different stakeholders among the different stakeholders and then the second part is the control what we call that is actually more monitoring and checking that actually what agreed what promised is is uh, is reflected in, in the actual operation is respected and uh, as uh, uh, as, as a complementary part, the one that I mentioned, the, we, the platform also envisioned the, the possibility to, to do flexibility scouting using drones that can fly in new area, new, new district, and these flights are used to, to gather uh, data related to visual image and LiDAR and thermal and different kind of uh, sensors, uh, signal information in order to try to identify a map for identification of potential flexibility presumer and then uh, have a follow-up with the, the engagement of, of those uh, stakeholders in the platform, uh, in the ecosystem. Next, please. So just to summarize and then leave, leave the, the scene to Giuseppe, the dream so concept uh, uh, is uh, it's, uh, uh, next one, Giuseppe, please, actually, I. Uh, I skip it one next slide, so I talk about both of slides. The, the, the final one, is in a nutshell, a dream concept is, uh, is conceived around some key technologies that is uh, uh, including uh, some forecasting uh, of, of the presumer consumption of presumer production and then uh, the possibility to have a market where the flexibility that uh, 
can can be exploited uh, by the, the uh, via the equipment of the prosumer and considering their their forecast the consumption production then a, a decision supporting system that can help the, the grid owner and also the, the prosumer stakeholder in order to identify the most convenient and most proper action for for them and then uh, the the, the, the decision support system is reinforced via visualization technique or in some way some techniques to, to summarize those information in order to give a very effective decision supporting uh, uh, action. Uh, on, on the presumer side, it's very important that we clusterize them in order to understand which kind of presumer can can be inter uh, we we may be interested in the kind of uh, uh, demand response uh, service that we, we are conceiving and we are putting in place and also the 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 part that is finishing with the, the creation of dynamic coalition uh, grouping different kind of presumer in order to offer the service that are the services that are requested from by the the grid owner the the the, the pre ecosystem or the, 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 the way that we are uh, boosting the ecosystem and maintaining the ecosystem is this kind of uh, a user and prosumer engagement that uh, as a prime, uh, uh, the first step of this one is the usage of drone for an aerial survey that, uh, as I said, is trying to identify which potential flexibility provider exists in, in, the, in the specific area or exploring new areas. And this is the way that we, we can maintain and uh, increase the number of participants in the business ecosystem. This is, this is closing the introduction to the platform. So I would like to leave the scene to, to Giuseppe. The, the time of the project is, as I said, we are already after the, 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 the middle of the project. The, the, the first delivery of technology, that is the third step that you see in this diagram, was already achieved. As I said, we are in the middle of the, the, second, the second reporting period in order to address the end of, with the end of the year the, the final period of the project where the, the final consolidated version of the platform will be released. And next one. Okay, so I don't know if you want, if you have some questions at this stage that should be in in, in general for the project, or, or I, I will, I think it's it's uh, the, the most convenient strategy, or we can go more in depth with the Giuseppe presentation in the specific uh, mechanism that we developed, and then we can have a final uh, question session. What do you think? Maybe we can have a final session question. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vincenzo. As uh, as anticipated, uh, we will uh, now see more in detail uh, the blockchain uh, uh, platform uh, to enable the decentralized network uh, optimization and uh, and control. Um, I'm a researcher for engineering, engineering informatica, and in uh, eDream uh, project, uh, coordinating the activities related to the blockchain uh, uh, development. So, the objective uh, of our project in relation to the blockchain integration can be summarized as follows. And uh, so, investigating the blockchain technology applicability to the demand response control and validation, implementing a scalable storage solution on distributed ledgers, and to develop a, a flexibility marketplace for uh, distributed provisioning and control of the flexibility service. The key principles or the pillars uh, on which our strategy is based on are uh, the secure storage, the decentralized smart contracts, and the validation and financial settlement capabilities uh, uh, offered by the, uh, our blockchain platform. Let's see in detail, starting from the secure storage. So uh, we implemented a second tier energy data storage that is uh, uh, summarized in the uh, schema that you can see on the right uh, 
end of, uh, of the screen. So it combines the blockchain ledger uh, with the distributed queuing system and uh, a distributed NoSQL database uh, in order to take the advantage of uh, both worlds. So uh, we have the high scalability provided by the NoSQL uh, database, uh, used to store uh, off-chain the energy data, and uh, we also have the tamper-proof provenance tracking and self-enforcing smart contract benefits uh, that the blockchain technology offers for the on-chain uh, storage uh, of the uh, energy data. So, um, we can see how data from the sensor in the, in the bottom part of the of the schema are um, sent to message uh, to a synchronous message uh, queue and then uh, are stored on uh, distributed databases and uh, periodically the data is also aggregated hashed and stored on uh, on blockchain so in this way we can uh, uh, verify a uh, using the, 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 the blockchain that uh, the, the data, uh, the integrity of the data stored on the NoSQL database and, uh, uh, to, uh, and we can guarantee that the uh, uh, data has not been uh, tampered. As, uh, as already mentioned, we, uh, we completed the first uh, development of the, of the uh, technology and we are uh, working to our uh, sec second release of the of the platform and uh, uh, in particular uh, we are uh, working to uh, finalize the integration with the pilot uh, sensors uh, infrastructure and uh, to include also uh, encryption uh, uh, to preserve data anonymity and uh, this is based on um, a zero knowledge proofs for example also we are extending this uh, second layer storage uh, solution uh, providing support for uh, public blockchains without uh, support for uh, a Turing complete smart contract this is um, a concept that is uh, used for example for uh, notary uh, platforms uh, based on, uh, on blockchain and combines the uh, operation uh, return uh, function with uh, uh, some uh, uh, hierarchical uh, deterministic uh, uh, addresses so in this uh, in this way we can uh, uh, use a specific uh, derived address uh, that can be founded by users. The addresses are uh, generated using uh, the same uh, root key, so it's possible to, to verify that are uh, uh, provided by a, a trusted uh, uh, party and uh, uh, data is then embedded in transaction uh, uh, sent after a funding transaction has been sent to the address. The second uh, layer of uh, our uh, uh, platform is uh, uh, using the centralized smart contract uh, to implement uh, a price-driven uh, flexibility uh, marketplaces. So uh, we can see here uh, summary of the interactions on the on the platform that starts with the DSO or the aggregators that send uh, a request for a flexibility uh, profile. Then the data from the prosumers is uh, gathered uh, as uh, flexibility tokens, and the flexibility market uh, contracts uh, uh, matches the bids and the offers and uh, uh, registers the trade uh, agreement. Finally, uh, we monitor uh, um, in near real time uh, uh, at the delivery point uh, uh, data from the uh, prosumers uh, to, to determine uh, the incentives or the penalties uh, for, the, for the prosumers, and we generate the final reports. In the, in the second uh, 
iteration uh, of the development, we are working to implement uh, uh, advanced uh, heuristic for uh, the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, demand offer matching. So in the case of uh, the energy trading, uh, we will see how the energy bids offer matching algorithm is considering, for example, the technical capabilities of the of the network as constraint. And for the uh, flexibility trading, we, uh, we are implementing an oracle-based uh, heuristic for the flexibility request disaggregation and for the bids offers matching. So starting from the energy bids offer matching, we can see that this is a two-step process. So in the first step, the clearing price is uh, determined from the uh, combining the uh, bids and offers. So we, uh, we determine the settlement price. In the second step, uh, we reduce the number of potential uh, mappings, considering the link capability and uh, computing the energy flow between the, the peers. Uh, this is optimized using a minimum cost uh, optimization uh, approach, and we compute an approximate solution of the, of the problem. For the flexibility request uh, disaggregation, uh, we are using uh, an uh, offline uh, oracles uh, so to uh, compute this uh, um, off chain so uh, without impact on the uh, running cost of the smart contract to uh, disaggregate the uh, DSO flexibility request uh, and the uh, offers from uh, the different uh, uh, aggregators and uh, the same uh, uh, mechanism is used for uh, uh, determine uh, the, uh, the the matching of bids and offers for the uh, price driven flexibility uh, match uh, matching so again in this case we are using oracles so we avoid uh, the excessive uh, computational uh, costs required uh, to, um, to compute uh, such kind of uh, a, a computation on the, uh, directly on the smart contracts. And so uh, we can see how the, the bids and offers from the DSOs uh, or aggregators are uh, uh, matched against the prosumer's uh, uh, offers. Finally, the third uh, pillar is uh, validation and uh, financial settlement of the uh, agreement on the uh, registered on the uh, blockchain network. So, in this case, we designed a two-stage uh, uh, process uh, that is uh, based on the peer-to-peer -peer network that validates the energy transactions. So uh, this leverages the, the proof of stake uh, concept. Uh, so is, uh, in this case, there is, there is no proof of work involved. And the, the, the goal is to avoid the heavy energy consumption needed uh, for a secure uh, proof of work uh, uh, blockchain. So in this case, uh, to register the energy transaction, the transaction are received from the uh, edge uh, devices and are validated uh, using a voting scheme uh, based on uh, stakes of the energy consumers involved in the in the transaction. Then uh, the uh, data are sorted uh, using uh, cryptographic uh, very, uh, very verifiable random functions and uh, a validator uh, for the transaction is uh, selected. And uh, finally, the consensus uh, algorithm uh, based on uh, proof of stake uh, commits to validate the transaction and propagate the transaction to the network. To, uh, to have a secure uh, mechanism to store the energy uh, transactions is uh, crucial for the final stage, that is the financial uh, uh, settlement. So, uh, it, in this case, we can see how data stored on, uh, can be used to determine 
uh, the uh, the reward uh, to for a for a specific uh, prosumer based on its behavior. Uh, in this case, we propose a dynamic model uh, for the uh, determine the incentives that uh, considers the the request from a DSO and the the actual uh, measured data from the smart meters and uh, compares this also a, a, not only the distance uh, from the request profile but also compares this against uh, the its baseline uh, um, its expected baseline in in this way we try to uh, compensate the prosumer uh, based on the effort made to fulfill the request compared on, uh, to the, its normal uh, behavior so uh, that's all for the technical part as i said we are currently working to finalize the second release of the software modules uh, and it's expected uh, to be integrated uh, fully integrated by the end of june and uh, in parallel we are working uh, on to uh, uh, to document uh, our uh, findings and uh, you will find, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the deliverables of the project describing uh, our uh, platform uh, on the project website that, that is reported here. And uh, we are also uh, organizing uh, a, a webinar uh, um, probably in the end of, uh, of May. And so if you are interested to to know more about this, uh, you can uh, follow us on, uh, also on our uh, uh, social network uh, channels. Thanks a lot. Uh, Dr. Kirsch and Dr. Aveduto for the very interesting presentation and for the interesting results of, of the project. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, uh, in the no, thanks. In the I have some. Um, first of all, you talk about the rule of um, the rule of users and prosumers, but uh, are there any skills and competencies required uh, for users and uh, prosumers to be involved, I mean additional skills to be involved in uh, such a kind of network or the system is fully transparent for them? Uh, Giuseppe, uh, if you want, I, I can comment uh, as a first. Uh, the, the general idea is that, I mean, obviously, um, having a, uh, an energy uh, infrastructure, so if you have, for example, a PV battery or a wind power or something that is stored in your infrastructure, that it, it could be uh, it could be as me as a prosumer, but, but it could be also kind of um, very well equipped uh, domestic uh, uh, context. But in any case, you should have something like it's a kind of conceptual uh, identification of your energy sources, of your energy requirements, and identification of which kind of, uh, uh, let's say, unspent flexibility that you can offer in, in the grid, in the market. So. It's, we are talking about uh, prosumers that in some way are already managing the energy uh, infrastructure handling. In this sense, uh, for those kind of, uh, of prosumers, the idea is try to, to provide a business ecosystem that is uh, as much as uh, possible easy to, to be adopted and easy to be uh, handled and managed. So, Theoretically speaking, the idea is not, not additional uh, requests for uh, and very understanding of the dynamics and so on should be required. Obviously, it's a dynamic of market, uh, so those presumers should, uh, should have this activity of follow the, the market and also uh, follow the, the, 
the activity that in the market they can offer. Uh, just to, to provide you an example, at this moment we have not something that could be an approach completely automatic where, uh, for example, I could have one uh, one agent that is operating uh, on behalf of me and managing my infrastructure and doing offer in the market and uh, agree in the market uh, flexibility provision and so on. This is something that is not so automatic. Uh, there is the, the presumer understanding uh, which are the proposal evaluating if the, the proposal or the proposals uh, uh, evaluate among the different proposals which one is the most convenient uh, for, for him and uh, do this, this step in the market. Everything that is uh, after the market, so I mean operational session, uh, energy transaction, uh, uh, economic transaction and so on, this is, everything is automatic, so it's not requiring the involvement of the presumer, it's the system that is managing for it. Giuseppe, I don't know if you want to add something. Well, you pretty much summarized it uh, already. Uh, my only comment is that, uh, well, uh, from the uh, from the technological side, uh, we are not acquiring any additional uh, skill. Um, well, the system, of course, will offer uh, some uh, dashboards or visualization tools to to understand how uh, is. Uh, uh, performing and uh, this can be uh, consulted by by the end users, but uh, it's uh, something that is uh, uh, technically speaking uh, not uh, not uh, required. Okay, thanks a lot. And um, just one more question. Um, looking to future scenarios. Uh, according to you, what is necessary to move from the pilots to a large-scale application? And what are you going to you adopt in the pilots that will not necessary in the large-scale uh, scenarios? Um. Okay, it's it's a it's a good question. <laughs> I mean, it's a good question uh, because there are many many aspects that uh, are uh, we we need to to consider for for this kind of question. One of those aspects is related to regulatory framework that in the different countries is is quite different. So, we can say that, for example, there are countries where. UK, we, we see with Kiwi, that is one partner, one aggregator operating in UK. There are some services, some some actions that you, you already have one market and UK, you already are allowed to do some kind of services provision. On the other side, there are other countries, for, and I have the example of Italy, uh, or, but maybe Greece is also similar, where the, the framework is was changed and is still evolving in this period, probably is going to accelerate a little bit the, 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 the change in the regulatory framework. And this is uh, actually one aspect that is, is impacting the, the, the range of services that we can offer. On the other side, there, there are the, the, the two aspects is the technology provision that uh, the, the, the aim of the, the impact of the, the project is to be very low impact in the, in, the, in the technical part. I mean, the idea is that you don't need a very big equipment in order to, to be part of the, the ecosystem. And the other part is the, the social, uh, social acceptance, the, the actually the, the establishment of uh, those kind of markets uh, uh, that can, can, can give the presumer the possibility to exploit their, uh, their infrastructure, their potential flexibility. And this, uh, we are on the way, the European Commission has different groups that are receiving uh, feedback also from the, the experimentation we, we do in the project and the idea is that uh, it's a process, we are on the way. It's uh, up today, we, we are not 100% not, not able to deploy everything in all the, the European countries, but there is a process. Some countries are more in advance, some other a little bit in late, but we are in the process of having a new scenario of this uh, flexibility energy market. Okay, thanks a lot. Mm. So, 
we look for the results of this interesting project, we'll uh, follow it. Uh, please let us know uh, about uh, your next webinar because it will be interesting to advertise them in our network. Um, thanks again for the presentation to Dr. Aliduta and Dr. Kosha. Uh, thanks a lot for the participation to all you and I remember that uh, in the framework of the IOE crew project we'll have a new webinar uh, next week uh, that is going to be announced on the project website. Thanks everybody.